We all know about child trafficking and the fact that our teens and young adults are being targeted through the internet for that. But do you know about sextortion? It is just the latest in a number of scams that is being perpetrated on our teens and our young adults and sometimes children as young as 12. This is a tactic where scammers will create fake profiles in order to catfish your children to gain their trust, to get them to send compromising photos, compromising messages, and then turn around and threaten them that if they do not pay them money, they will expose them and put it all over social media for all of their friends and their family to see, basically shaming them into paying them money in order to prevent this from happening. And we're seeing it more and more these days. And the latest one we have is a case coming out of Michigan, a Jordan DeMay who was caught up in the scam, unfortunately. And as a result of that scam and not knowing how to handle it, he took his own life. This is his story. Sextortion. It's a word that many of us might not be familiar with, but these coordinated social media scams involving nude photos are targeting our kids with devastating consequences. We brought you the story of Jordan DeMay from Marquette, a high school senior who took his own life just six hours after scammers from Nigeria conned him, then blackmailed him. What makes this story so unique is that investigators actually caught up with the three men who they believe did this and that Jordan's parents are talking about this because they don't want any other family to have to go through it. Kimberly Gill, you traveled up to Marquette. You met with Jordan's family. Um, there's so many layers to this yeah. story, and I can only imagine how difficult it was uh, for his mom and dad to talk about this. Really, really difficult for them. And they said it over and over how difficult it was for them to talk, but they feel like it's their purpose to do this now because they don't want to see this happen to any other child. And it's happening probably more frequently than what we know it is. This is yet another thing we have to talk to our kids about. I know it's not easy. It's not an easy conversation to have, but it's necessary. We have to open that communication, open that door, and let your kids know that you can talk to them. 3,000 teens were targeted last year. That's an average of two out of three teens that were targeted. And that number could actually be much higher because those are only the ones that were willing to report it, either through social media reporting or reporting it to a parent or another adult in their life. So many teens don't report it until it's too late. Let's open that communication. These three men who are from Nigeria who are accused in this case, they feel have targeted at least 100 other children and young adults. Uh, during the same time, so. Which is staggering, and I feel that it's, I think, an education for all of us about what these scams can be. Let's yeah. go ahead and take a look. That would have been his senior year. It would have been his last season at Market High School, but that smile right there was classic Jordan DeMay. Jordan DeMay's parents describe all the things that made the 17-year-old special. Jordan was a really kind individual. He was very social. Uh, he was inclusive with everybody, the kid dancing around the locker room, smiling. Um, he played sports, was very involved in sports. He was a very compassionate young man with a future ahead of him. Jordan's promising future and pleasant personality was the exact reason his family believes he was targeted in a social media sextortion scam and only took a few exchanges on Instagram to change everything. Did you know how much he used social media or was it ever a problem? We monitored his text messages for a long time. We monitored his usage, his phone. We set all the parent restrictions through Verizon and through Apple and everything that we could do. But as he got older, he was six, six seven weeks away from his 18th birthday. So at that point it was like, you know, he's gonna be an adult, he can make his decisions here, so. Can you talk about the day of the tragedy? What happened? I had received a text message from Jordan 
um, that said, Mother, I love you, which wasn't out of the ordinary. You know, it didn't set off any alarms in my head that he texted me during the middle of the night. But I, as I was getting myself ready and my daughter's ready, I texted him back and he didn't respond. And when he didn't respond, I, I knew that something wasn't right. So she messaged me in the morning and just asked, hey, is Jordan at your house? Did he go to school? So I, I got up and I peeked out the window and I saw his car in the driveway, which I thought was odd. So I'm like, oh, he slept in today. And completely not like him. I, I think he's only missed the bus once or twice his entire school age. So I went into his bedroom and I found him in his bedroom in his bed. Jordan, just weeks before graduation and his 18th birthday, took his own life in the middle of the night. I mean, you didn't hear anything out of the ordinary that night or? Unfortunately, I did. Um, he shot himself at approximately 3.45 in the morning and I happened to be up going to the restroom at the same time and I heard, I heard the shot. I didn't, it didn't compute with me. I was, you know, in the middle of the night, half sleeping, and it, it startled me, and I, I thought about it for a second, and it just, it didn't sound like a gunshot, for, for sure. It was just, it was loud, and so I didn't know if he just kicked something over in his room or spilled something or whatever, you know, and, and so I just went back to bed. So you see that this has happened. There's a panic, but how do you put it together that, it was something related to being bullied and the sextortion on social media. So the people um, that were speaking with Jordan on Instagram, they sent one of the photos to Jordan's girlfriend at the time. And um, she contacted us and let us know, and we let the detectives know, and they took it from there. The detectives discovered Jordan had been speaking to three men from Nigeria who were pretending to be a teenage girl, asking for nude photos of Jordan. They were grooming him for those hours, simple conversations, slowly progressing into flirting and into more sexual type conversations and, and basically got to the point where he sent a, a picture of himself to her. One of the men demanded money from Jordan, writing, I will send these nudes to everyone and also send to your family and friends until it goes viral. All you have to do is cooperate with me and I won't expose you. And when that happened, it was lights out. And that was a little after midnight. And then the tables turned and the extortion happened and the pressure and they, they pushed him hard. Later, Jordan wrote, I'm going to kill myself right now because of you. They replied, do that fast or I'll make you do it. These three guys from the other side of the planet came into my home, who was secured while we were sleeping and murdered my son. He sent them $300. I believe he sent them money multiple times. How long was this going on? Do, do, do we have any idea? Six hours. Did you even know it was a thing? I don't know that I even knew that this was even... Maybe way in the back of my head, but not to this extent where they are pressuring young kids, young adults, um, and asking for the amounts of money that they are. Um, I had no idea that it was going to that point. And that's why we're here, is I think we need to be the voice for the parents who either can't talk about this or maybe have some re reservations about bringing this to the public. Um, there's a lot of embarrassment in, in this stuff, but you know, in our case, that it just this is the story that needs to be told and people need to know about this, especially parents because they don't know what's going on. I can't save him, but maybe we can save some other kids by sharing his story. That was a, a really moving story. What was your biggest surprise in all of this and listening to them? I, I think my biggest surprise was how elaborate this whole thing is and was mm -hmm. and how quickly it happened. Um, Jordan and his family, his father, uh, they were getting prepared to go on a vacation. He had just gone to the Walmart and picked up some things for their vacation, was in a great mood. 
Uh, his, his father said goodnight to him at 10 o'clock. Yeah. And uh, we know now that by 345 or whatever the time was that he got up, the father got up to use the bathroom and heard the gunshot, that in that short amount of time, that, that was all it took for them to groom him and to get him to take his own life. Yeah, it, it, it is that six hour mark yeah. that I, I just can't. And as parents wrapping your head around where it went for for a young man. Yeah. Um, how did investigators though even track these suspects down? Because we think of scams that are happening from overseas sure. and it's kind of like, well, the money went and it's really hard to find people. Yeah. So the three men in Nigeria, they sent a nude photo to Jordan's girlfriend and she knew that there was something wrong with this because this was basically a, an open and closed case. The, the detectives came in, they saw that he had committed suicide. Of course, they didn't know why, uh, but a couple days pass and the girlfriend thinks to show this picture to his parents and the parents took that photo to the detectives and they started to investigate and that's how they tracked this whole scheme down. By that time though, Jordan had deleted Instagram and all oh my other gosh, of social course. media platforms off his phone. They still to this day can't find his personal computer. They feel that he probably disposed of that too because it would have had any evidence. And what this really boils down to is this is a kid who was the homecoming king. He was a stellar mm -hmm. student, yeah. good looking. He didn't want to disappoint his his parents at this yeah. time in his life where he's about to graduate, he's about to turn 18. Um, and he felt like he needed to take, he would rather take his life than to let his parents know that he had made this mistake. Oh, there's so much it's pressure here. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. heartbreaking. So where do things stand now with the three men who have been accused of this? Yes, been so, indicted? so three men from Nigeria, which right. it's really remarkable that uh, the Nigerian government is even cooperating right. with investigators, but two of them are brothers, Samuel Ogoshi and Samson Ogoshi. Uh, they're each in their 20s. And then Ezekiel Robert, he's 19. They are yeah. waiting to be extradited back to the, here to the United States. And um, the, the family, they feel like thanks to the relationships that the detectives with the FBI have with international organizations, mm -hmm. they were able to get the cooperation of Nigerian authorities to extradite them back here. This will be a, a landmark case when it happens. Yeah, because you said, of course, that they're perhaps suspects in almost 100 other cases, exactly. but it's this one that exactly. they are going to be um, coming back for. Yeah. You know, we all um, we all want to protect our kids. And um, and when I step back and I, and I look at this, and I hear Jordan's parents, you know, giving some advice on, yeah. on that regard. And that really is, I think, that the, the beautiful gift that they're able to give. They really are. And let me just say this too. Um, something else that surprised me about this is that the number of parents that they said have reached out to them saying that a similar thing happened to them or their child committed suicide and they don't never found out why. And they wonder now if it was a situation where it was a sextortion scheme and they never knew to investigate that. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's another thing that, that's really surprising. But yes, they have made it their purpose to educate people about this. I mean, certainly we do stories on the news all the time about sextortion. I just never, it never dawned on me that this was happening on Instagram and just the elaborate scheme of this. He, they were demanding a thousand dollars. He sent them three hundred dollars, and they just pushed and pushed and pushed, wanting the rest of the money till they mm -hmm. just pushed too far. So um, they do. They have, um, they have tips that they want to give to parents about social media usage. But again, he was uh, just a few weeks from turning eighteen. So when you're, you're almost an adult. adult. Yeah, yeah, you know, but they took all the precautions when he was younger. They put, as you heard him say, all of the precautions on uh, from Verizon, from Apple. They monitored mm -hmm. his usage. Now, if they had to do it again and they have younger children, they said one thing is don't let your children go into their bedrooms or in a secluded area with their cell phones or their tablets. And it really has made me think about how I will handle it with even my four-year-old. Absolutely, you access, know? which the, is getting younger and younger. Younger and younger. And younger. Even, even on YouTube, if I put my four-year-old on something that I think is safe for him, he will click on something else and go, he goes down a rabbit hole just like this. And oh yeah, sudden, oh, the cue, the curated things, <laughs> exactly. He's watching something that, you know, is, is, is so more mature that he, he doesn't need to be watching. And just, it really is scary. And it, it is, as a mom, I remember, 
um, the night we reported this on the news that they had uh, arrested these men in, mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And I remember driving home because since I've had children, Chrissy, the stories they hit so much differently they do, now. They do, don't they? You know, yeah. uh, not that, not that I, I was cold and didn't care before, but once you have children, it just really, you really carry it home with you. And I remember driving home that night after reporting it and thinking, how in the world did this happen? And I wanted to know, wanted to know more. Uh, and that's why I thought it was also important to go and talk to his, his parents and, and share this story with all of our viewers. Jordan and I were gonna go and get tattoos together after he turned 18. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to still go ahead and do that. One of the things we always said or would write in cards to each other was love you to the moon oh. and back. Mom, what's the past year been like? Um, it's been extremely difficult without him here. Um, for me, for my kids, I'm sure the same for John and his family. There's still a part of me that thinks he's gonna come through my front door. Through their pain, Jordan's parents have found purpose, teaching children and parents how to be smarter about social media usage, which includes encouraging kids to speak up when they make a mistake, something Jordan may have been afraid to do. That's the twisted part of this entire sextortion stuff, and that's, uh, that's why these criminals target these types of, of youth. A lot of times what parents do is we're constantly saying no, 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 right? That's who I am. I'm like, do not do this, do not do this, do not send pictures, this is my phone, do not do this, don't do, don't, don't. What we don't do as parents is say, but if you do, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm trying to be better uh, at that as a parent with my younger girls saying, if you do this, it's okay. Jordan, I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to love you. I'm going to be mad. You're going to be grounded, but we're going to fix this. And Jordan was so willful and so um, poised. And he just, I, like you said, he was just in, in that position in life where he was, he did not want to disappoint us. And he felt that the only way out of this thing um, was to do that. And they were pressuring him hard. They were, they were telling him they were, they were going to make him do this, you know, and it was just push, 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 push late at night not thinking properly, yeah. and it happened. Make sure who you are talking to on the social media platforms, that they are who they say they are. Even if you have some, some mutual friends in common, it still might not be who you think it is. You know, let your kids know it, it's okay to go to someone for help. This is much bigger than uh, what you can handle. Just go to someone and ask for help. Your, your life is worth it. We need to be better at not, not allowing our kids to be seclusive on their devices, meaning not in their bedrooms, mm -hmm. not in the basement, mm -hmm. you know, not out in the garage, not in the treehouse. And that's a simple thing that everybody can do. Simple thing that every do. parent can do, yeah. absolutely. It is tough to sit and talk about the things that happened to Jordan that night and think about that our son is no longer with us. This is... Jordan's story and that's what motivates us to go out and tell it to try and save someone else. All right, so Kimberly, advice is one thing, but I think sometimes people look for laws on the books to protect our kids and what's happening out there right now that could actually head something like this. Yeah, off. there is a bill that's being talked about. Actually, let me read it so I don't uh, miss anything here. It's called the Kids Online Safety Act. Mm -hmm. It was introduced in the U.S. Senate just last month. Uh, Michigan Senator Gary Peters is a supporter of it. And I'll just read some of the key points here. It will require social media platforms to give minors options to protect their information, responsibility for platforms to prevent harm to minors, such as the promotion of suicide, eating, dis eating disorders, and sexual exploitation, and require social media companies to do a yearly audit that assesses risks to minors. And those are just a few of the things Jordan's parents would actually like there to be more. Mm -hmm. They feel so strongly that social media really doesn't even have a benefit for children. Like you should be 18 to use social media is what they think mm -hmm. should be enacted. Uh, it's almost like uh, you need to be 18 or 21 to drink or smoke cigarettes or go to a strip club or anything like that because mm -hmm. our government 
is having a hard time keeping up with how fast technology is moving. And you think about things like um, AI, you know, it's only going to get Oh, and those conversations are just starting. AI is the dumbest it is today. <laughs> today. That's it. And it's, gonna, exactly. it's just going to get smarter from there. Exactly. It's, yeah, there's, there's so, so much here. Um, this story is international. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you Google Jordan DeMay and you see reports from around the world. Um, and I know that after even airing your stories, I can only imagine the reaction that Jordan Jordan's parents are getting. Um, how are they? How are they doing with with all of this? Because advocacy is powerful, yeah. but it's also very difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult for them to talk about it. As I said, they feel like this is their purpose. They've each, you know, pretty much quit their day jobs, so to speak. The dad works in real estate. The mom, uh, they they each have two younger children um, in different marriages, but they they just want to talk to people, talk to schools. Uh, educate people on what happened to Jordan. They feel like that this is the way to protect people and fight for these laws that are going to protect our children. Um, one of the things that I was really impressed with Jordan's mom is even though she went through this and will never see her child again, she feels sympathy for the mother, the mothers of these Nigerian young men who did this. She said to me, uh, a mother with two children, because two of them were brothers, mm -hmm. uh, are they possibly going to see their children be in jail for the rest of, in, for the rest of their lives for doing this? And that, mo that mother is going to lose her children. Now, granted, she would be able to see them, maybe see them again, mm -hmm. and I won't be able to see mine, but the fact that she had compassion for these men, the mother of these men mm -hmm. who did this, I just thought spoke volumes and there were so many times that I was trying to choke back the tears in the interview yeah. um, because you just your heart just breaks for this family um, yeah yeah so and just um, really wonderful for them to share it with us because so that is, yeah. is not is not easy and, and I think also the larger part of understanding for our kids and knowing that they can know it's okay to make a mistake and that um, that families are there for them. And of course, his family was there for him, but mm -hmm. sometimes when our kids get going in a certain way and they don't want to disappoint us, it's also something for, for parents to look yeah. forward to. Yeah, Christy, that was one of the biggest things that I had to choke back tears is when he said that. If he had to do it again, he would let his children know that even if you make a mistake, I'm mm -hmm. still going to love you, still come to me and talk to me about it. Talk yeah. to an adult, talk to someone. It's not worth taking your life. It's never that bad. Yeah. yeah. If you find yourself in the situation where your teen or young adult has been a victim of sextortion, you may be wondering, what do I do now? Well, here are some really good tips from the FBI on what you should do. Block the person on social media immediately. All platforms, whatever it is, block them. Do not remove the content. Do not remove messages. Do not remove pictures. Do not delete the social media accounts. The FBI is going to need that information in order to track the person down and hold them accountable for this crime that is committed. That's the first thing people want to do is delete their accounts, but do not do that. It makes their job a lot easier if you don't. You're going to report it to whatever platform it's being done on. You can contact 1-800-FBI for information, and you can contact 1-800-THE-LOST for help. And the important thing to keep reiterating to your teen is that it is not their fault. They are the victim in this. They were taken in by a scam, not that much unlike other scams that are done to the elderly or vulnerable in our world there are a lot of scammers out there it is not their fault they are the victim of a crime and it's not the end of the world